Uh, today is the 18th of September. We are in the wonderful hotel at the Dam, the Krasnopolsky Hotel, in the palace room overlooking Dam Square. Across the square, there we find the Royal Palace. And today we have two very special guests here in this wonderful room. Mr. Ibrahim Hawa from Israel, Jerusalem, and Mr. Dries van Acht. He was the former Prime Minister in this beautiful country, the Netherlands. So very welcome for being here with us. And we know, Mr. van Acht, that uh, somewhere in the past you have been the uh, Prime Minister and then your ideas concerning what was happening in the Middle East were a little bit different than nowadays. So can you please give us some information about what happened in your life that you made a certain switch? There are two points to be made here. Um, one is in the 70s and early 80s when I was Prime Minister in this country almost all Dutchmen, almost unanimously, thought what Israel is doing must be, as of necessity, well done. Um, that um, in, in the background of that um, kind of thinking were, were two uh, factors. One was the Holocaust. Um, the Jewish people have gone through such massive horrors, unique in world history, that none of us is entitled to utter any kind of criticism on the state that the, these Jews are shortly after World War II creating for themselves as a safe haven. And the second uh, point that uh, was in people's mind uh, was um, um, had to do with uh, the Christian character of this of, of this country predominantly Christian at least at that time and notions uh, that uh, they had uh, gotten from of found in what Christians call the Old Testament and in, in the Old Testament there is talk of God's chosen people and uh, the promised land and people, many people thought at the time and still many, quite a few do today that what Israel was realizing was effectively making what the good Lord had promised um, millennia ago and so why should not should we criticize that was the, the dominant feeling in this country and I was just one out of 15 million who without further thinking for myself had the same uh, ideas it was only after I must say a bit uh, I feel a bit ashamed to confess after what I saw happening in Saba and Shatila, under the, in, in fact, uh, not leadership, but anyway, co-responsibility of the then Defense Minister Sharon, that I thought, we have to rethink this. It, it cannot be so as we always in this country have kept thinking. And then, Maybe one more thing, I was wrong, so yeah, that is implied in what I just confessed. I was wrong, but not as wrong as people might conclude today, since what Israel was doing in the 70s, early 80s, was as far not as bad as what happened afterwards. There was only a beginning of a settlement policy, in the occupied territories and there was no wall or fence and there were not that many checkpoints uh, very few only and all that kind of harassment and 
violations of human rights that was not yet happening. So I was wrong, but not as I was not as stupid as people might conclude today. Ibrahim, you live, um, if I understood it well, for about 30 years in occupied areas. <coughs> Can you describe your life in those 30 years of being occupied and why you came to the point where now you have this wonderful website, Peace Bankers Jerusalem. Can you explain to us what happened in your life in the, in the past and what's happening right now? Assalamu alaikum. I think it's something really we it's missing on this earth. As what I understand about my own family living on the Mount of Olives around 1400 years and we are 14,000 memory of the family on the mountain and today because the world is became 30,000 people move from all over the West Bank to come inside the wall like in the green line and really something uh, as living there through all this life as uh, with the 14,000 memory and 1400 year living on the Mount of Olives as uh, we are still not recognized as a people living in that land right. it's not the occupied of today the occupied is being occupied because we are not never have our own money never have really as a leader for us is and they they have a two war in that land called 1948 and 67 and the, the separation between the two the same people as the Palestinian in 48 became Golan Heights Gaza Strip Israel and West Bank mm -hmm. and that people don't study much about one another because in all the book of God say you have to love your neighbor as your brother as yourself and that's what missing today we don't study one about another. Everyone will go after the newspaper and TV and radio and cameras uh, and all that. That's a big mistake because we don't, it's not the separation wall what we have separate me and, and my brother. All the wall built today between all over the country has never been built, built between Israeli and Palestinian. It's all the wall till today, like I live here on Mount of Olives, and they have a wall here in front of my home and down below is Bethany and after Bethany there's a settlement called Mali Adumim the wall have to be built here but they make a, like we are in the green line West Bank and Israel after that all the way to Jericho and all that and I don't feel it is a, is a the problem between the nation each one we have to go back to God and to love one another and don't uh, Close that walls and do that. The wall is not going to be more strong than Berlin Wall or anything. Is it in that country we are choosing people because we are both the seeds of Abraham. And we have really we have two uh, different mother, but we are brothers because mm -hmm. we have the same father. Mm -hmm. And you have to know there is something really we n you never pay attention to it. Each one of us have a hand. And each hand have five fingers. And in, in each hand, with those five fingers, there is a word, name of God. And this is a word in Arabic. You see, Alif, Lam, Lam, and He. Allah, Wahad. God, God is one. Allah, Alif, Lam, Lam, and He. Allah, Wahad. And in Hebrew, Hashem, He, Shin, Mim, Hashem, Mahad. As God is one. We are chosen people in this land. Our suffering from all those factory, all those business people who build weapons and guns and machines, they are too smart. They will must dig and find some problem somewhere to keep fighting. I don't believe there is a problem between me and my cousin as a brother, as a Jew in that land. I've been working 34 years in basic telephone company. I've been as a, as a father and friend and brother to everyone. I never be a boss. As I worked 34 years with all that, I, I learned uh, Russian, English, Hebrew, and Arabic. I speak four language. And I never feel through my own home and few of the brothers being in my home, 
uh, which I have open home, people coming from around the world to my home. I'm not citizen of any country in the world. I never have passport. I came here and at the security in your country today, they told me, who are you? Who give you this? Where is your passport? I don't have passport. <laughs> I have travel documents say, I born in Israel with no Israel in 1942. And they give me citizen on the same Israeli paper, I'm Jordanian. Jordan is not happy to have them citizen on, on Israeli paper. <laughs> the security, they've been asking one another. And they told me, who you know here? I told him, yeah, I will call. He's a friend of mine. They announced about with the microphone. Brother Muhammad came and she came to pick me up. They never saw that. They told me, That's strange to them. And I've been for that. I go with my coffee and galavia, scared to come with that like that to everywhere because I've been in Portugal a few years ago and and work the same way. See, we are here to bring a new generation. We need a, a leader have a heart for loving because there is 99 name of God in, in the book of God, in the Quran, and one of the holy name is love and peace. And if we don't have love and peace for us, we are not worth anything. We have to love one another. Yeah. We have to study about one another. If we don't visit one another, we don't know anything. Thank you. If I remember well, you have visited the occupied areas. Uh, can you Several please? Times. Yes. Can you please give some uh, information about what you have seen and experienced? Dear friend, there is um, there is so much misery that I don't have the adequate words available, and certainly not in a language that is not with which I'm not fully familiar. Um, it is. Let me. I, I had better. I, I had better quote a man of the highest reputation in our world, and rightly so. And his name is the Nobel Prize winner for peace, Desmond Tutu, the black bishop of South Africa, the hero of the of the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. A man who wrought a miracle almost in South Africa after the whites were kicked out and the majority took over. Well, that has Desmond Tutu. He he said what uh, I fully agree with. That is, I quote him almost literally. He said, "I have seen here." in this part of the world, in Palestine, so much misery and injustice as I never saw in my own South Africa th through all the years. So, that's enough. It's not, uh, nothing hidden today. Everyone, as a child born, born with politics and know the history and the stories about the life. Really, we need a new generation to understand what's going on and to broke the wall, not the wall what they built it from concrete. We want to broke the wall to visit and meet one another. I'm so rich to be with you here today. You know, I never get tired when I sit with all the smile uh, people and listening one to another. As we have to sit to listen one another. We are choosing people to be in that land. The Jews don't have another land and we don't have another land. I'm Palestinian, I'm Arab, and there is 22 Arab countries in the world. But I'm Palestinian. And they, if they give me Gaza or Jerusalem, I don't want to change it with my small state where I born. My, where I born is something holy for me. I've been fly around the world, and each time I fly like on those birds. Thank God for the right brother who built it. But I, each time I never feel different, much different when I fly from country. But when I landed in that land, I just come and and kiss the ground and thank God I return back home because there is a home. For each one, there is Mother Earth and Mother where he live. We have to bring all of our children back home. It doesn't matter. We are our, our heart crying for your children when they are in Europe, in, in Afghanistan or Iraq, because each one have a mother. And the mother is something holy. Because it's run, nothing more than for, for the prophet, after the prophet and God, there is a mother. Mother holy give her life to us to grow and suffer all her life when we are so kids, 
each time when you cry, you have a hard crime. And now we are in the front of our mothers, we are all kids. We never be grown because the mother always like to protect us. And that's what we have to study and to learn to one another. And they've been, you know, I have a home to bring people. I have on the table Jew, Muslim, Christian, Buddha, and they fly around the world. That's how we can learn to one another. We need new generation to bring love. Yeah. And you have to know, I just want to say one word. There is no peace and there's no one will rest in this world if Jerusalem there is a problem. Jerusalem is the key. Yeah. Nice. Jerusalem is the key for loving and peace. And we have to love and we are choosing people to live in this land and there's plenty room for you and me and for everyone. Thank you. You say that uh, the position of Jerusalem, especially the old city, is a very important part of the uh, future peace solution. Is that right, what I say? Is it important city for everyone on this earth? Because if there's a problem, you cannot vis come visit me. If there's something wrong there, you cry for it. You give life, your life to, to, to that city. It don't matter who's control it. You will give your life to that city because this is holy for everyone. What can the ordinary people do in, in all countries all over the world, also in the Middle East, to help establish uh, peace in the Middle East? First, uh, what I understand, all the what people study and learn and read the newspaper and listen to the news daily, they cannot know much about us. I ask everyone to come to that land, because that land is a holy city, especially Jerusalem. If we have the biggest uh, salt as the Dead Sea, we still have bring material to clean from overseas. We bring the climb uh, where they brought it from Holland, from all that. The city of Jerusalem, you. The city of Jerusalem, the income of Jerusalem, the tourists. If there is no tourists, no life. And we call the world to come to Jerusalem. As how are you going to come when you hear bad news? We have something good. We need peace in that city to bring you. Because I hear, and so especially American, when they come to the land, the them families, they pray over them because they think they are not coming back. They're going to danger country. And that's what we want, peace in this land. Stop shipping to us weapons and guns and machine. We can, we have something called sulha. Sulha to bring peace between one another. When two, two boys or two guys fighting or two families, we, one came in the middle to bring love in the middle for a cup of coffee. They never go, we never go to police station or lawyer or court. And I feel as, as a, between 14,000 memory of my family, we are the rich people in the world through my travel around the world. We rich because you see how people are suffering today with divorce and all that stories. Between the 14,000, almost zero divorce. Because anything happened between the couple as the older people go and fix it between them and, and live, mm -hmm. live together. As you see how children rich when they live without separation, no father, no mother, like what happened around the world. I'm sorry to say that, but that's what happened in the world. But there, as a family, we are there. Strong foundation. Thank you. May I um, add to something to that? Yes. That is, um, you rightly said, and we should keep saying all the time, that there cannot be peace in the Holy Land uh, unless the inhabitants of that land, be they, be they Israelis or Palestinians, finally start to fully ac accept and respect each other as children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren of, of, of Abraham, Ibrahim. Um, that, is, that is of course so. Uh, I cannot uh, refrain myself from referring to how this operation started when the Zionist movement in the beginning of, or maybe already at the end of the 20th century and all through the, and at the end of the 19th century and all through the 20th century um, had the slogan, motto of their operations and tried to uh, induce Jews wherever living 
certainly after World War II, of course. Um, listen, here is a, a people, the Jews, without land, that is to say, without land, um, with safety for them. Here is a people without land that should come to a land without people. That was the slogan. What? Land without people? In, 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 the, in, the early, uh, in, in the beginning of the 20th century, 90% of the inhabitants of the Holy Land were Palestinians, Arabs. Land without people. And even in 1947, when the United Nations made its uh, plan for a partition, uh, still 70% of the population there was Arab. Uh, it consisted of Arabs. So, um, there, uh, there is, of course, there is a lot to, to be done also by the Palestinians. But uh, allow me to first address the, the, the Zionists, the founding fathers of this whole operation, and say this was not and is not and never shall be a land without people, apart from aside from, from the Jews, of course, that, that came in. Um, no, this is a, a land that you shall, shall have to share together one way or another and to have to share in respect and after a while, out of respect, can grow love. Yes. Well, this, the point of departure was totally wrong. In the year 2000, the United Nations uh, have declared that they want peace on this planet by the year 2010. Mm. So peace on this planet by the year 2010 means also peace in the Middle East. What kind of initiative has a chance of getting the support of all parties involved? First, uh, for our cousin, as a Jew in that land, have to be recognized when they came as, in, as Israel as a nation in 1948, they have to recognize they come to a land there's people in it. Yes. They don't come to an empty land. And here, here. You see, I'm not citizen of that land or anywhere in the world. But it's bother me. First, I'm not allowed to vote for the leader of the country, for Mr. Olmert, because I'm not citizen of the land. And I don't care about that. But I love the best for my own children. And I study and I fit in that more deeply because when God opened the door for my own children to go to study in America, I don't study the law. As I find that after three years, my own children is not allowed to come back again home because we are not citizens of the land. But it's still, when, when one million Russian came from Russia and from a few hundred thousand from Ethiopia, they, they receive the citizenship at the airport. I don't need citizenship, but I need some rights, some freedom. Mm. I want to bring my children back home. I have children live 22 years in America. They are not allowed to come to live in the home where they are born. They are allowed to come to visit as American from three weeks to the three months. I'm not against any, any Jew. There is plenty of land for every one of us. But each one, we don't want anyone to feed us honey and cake. But we want to live. With, without um, contending that uh, the, the, the Palestinians uh, also, the Palestinians have quite a, quite a, a lot to do to make things uh, better, to solve the problem. I, again, I cannot but start by noting the fact that up to now, the by far biggest concession ever in this matter has been done by the Palestinians. What do I mean? The Palestinians lost in 60, uh, uh, lost um, already in, by the end of 49, say roughly four-fifths of Palestine. Or, uh, as of 1949, there was only one-fifth of Palestine left for the uh, Palestinians, the, uh, the uh, first inhabitants at least for the last 2,000 years. Now, 
um, then 67 comes and all of Palestine gets occupied, all of it. And what, what happened in, in 1988, that was the point I wanted to make. In 1988, Yasser Arafat, what, whatever you may think about the leadership of Yasser Arafat, there are pros and cons and yeses and noes, it's all fine. But one thing, in 1988, Arafat succeeded in getting his Fatah, uh, PLO, to, to just to uh, state we do no longer object the very existence of the state of Israel and what he said came down to giving away that four-fifths of the land to Israel in 88 already and but of course under the all un, under the uh, condition or assumption better assumption that then the Palestinians would at least be given the remaining residual one-fifth of Pal Palestine to make their own state there and that big gesture the by far biggest concession ever done in the whole process, by whom, whomsoever, has not been responded to by Israel in the slightest. Dus de first to, to look at, to, I'm sorry, must, that's how the facts are, is Israel. And they're still waiting for uh, serious concessions by Israel. And si since these concessions have not come, have not come, the settlements have kept being built more and more and widened and broadened, expanded all the time, more uh, checkpoints, more thoroughfares only accessible for the, the Israeli army and the colonists and all that and all that and all that. N there was nothing to, uh, to, for the Palestinians to, to gain, to get, to acquire in all those years, and that is the main reason the world should know that, why Hamas came to power. That's how, that's how yeah, my, most people overlook that. But that's the main reason why Hamas could come to power. Despair and frustration about the non-success of uh, the uh, old Fatah uh, and their, their so-called leadership. You were talking about uh, respect. You did that too, Ibrahim. What kind of initiative will, will create security for the Palestinians and Israel so that this respect and trust maybe will come into being? What kind of thing should happen? Till now we hear a lot about meeting all the time, but we don't see it uh, on the ground. Every time when they have meeting after a few hours, there is attacked or something like that. We need really someone can keep the word. We need some people can keep the word. Not at the same time when they are meeting, drinking coffee together, and they're going to attack one another. Because there is... How that can be happened? Where's the leader? To keep his word. The word is important in the, uh, today. That's the most of the suffering. Because there is no strong leader to keep all his army around him. And each one will do what he wants to do without to share with the, with the other. And that, I think, that most of the suffering in that land because there's no respect one or another. They don't keep the word. Mr. Van Acht, you uh, are writing a book about the Palestinians. I think you are also writing in your book about the suffering of the Palestinians. Okay, gotcha. Would you be willing to tell something about it? There, there's so much uh, worth uh, telling and explaining uh, uh, about uh, the suffering of the Palestinians. Th that's, uh, that is too long a story to tell in, in, in a TV broadcast. But, um, let me say one, one, one thing. And, uh, and let me again uh, touch on, on a very sensitive uh, subject in, in this uh, context. 
and that is the world out of Israel, beyond Israel, keeps thinking uh, of the Palestinians as, I am going to simplify a bit, but not more than a bit. These are these wicked people of the suicide bombings. It is so bad in, in this country and not only in this country. There is certainly after 9-11, there is something that is really obsessing many people's minds and that is, you know what, simplification. Palestinians are all Muslims. That is not true, we know. Yes, a big majority is Muslim, but not all. Secondly, all Muslims are terrorists. After 9-11, yeah, that, that goes down, that people just digest that easily. Think. And certainly, all Palestinians are Muslims, all Muslim terrorists, so all Palestinians are terrorists. And that is the thinking in, with so many people up to today. Okay, look, the, the only thing um, that I think, ah, oh, let me, you, dear, dear friend, you invited me and I'm, uh, I'm, I was a politician and in a way I, I keep being that because that never goes away. Um, the suffering of the Palestinians can only brought to, an, to a close if there is going to be a viable Palestinian state, sovereign and viable, their own state. Now, how to, to create such a situation? That can only be done when, when uh, the occupied territories, or at least most of those territories, by far the most part of it, biggest part of it, uh, are, are made available to the Palestinians to create their own state. Uh, viable means contiguous, inter alia. Dus not cut into a, a lot of pieces. Not a system of open air prisons, as uh, the Israeli professor um, Tanja Reinhardt uh, has written and said many times. Not a system of open air prisons, not uh, an a, a, a number of Bantu stands, but real territory contiguous on which a viable state can be established. Now, it, that means that Israel should have to remove, when I talk, uh, uh, talk about uh, West Bank and East Jerusalem together, then it is 450,000 settlers. Gaza, remember all the, all the hullabaloo about Gaza? Yes, it was a dramatic operation, but it regarded 8,000 settlers. And now I'm talking about 450,000 settlers. That is, one must conclude in despair virtually impossible. So, and if that turns out to be impossible, as we all fear it is, then there is only one thing left. That is the simple solution, the most reasonable of all, to then jump to, yes, to the conclusion, the compelling conclusion, let all people Inhabitants of the, of the Holy Land, all people living on Palestinian territory, be together in one state. Just in one state. Then, then there is no settlement problem anymore, or hardly any. It's anyway, it's much smaller. In one state. But that means, my friend, that the Zionist movement will have to, to drop its core thinking of a, a, a state that is uh, dominated forever by, by Jews and in which non-Jews will be second-class citizens. That is the big concession that then must be, uh, must be done by, by the Zionists and that will be.
that will be very, very difficult indeed. I almost started cursing, but it, my, my language remains pure. But that's it. That is either give the Palestinians their 22 percent, but then in full or almost in full, so that they can create their own a sovereign state on that 22 percent of the residual land. If you can't do that because of settlers and what more, then there is no other choice thinkable, conceivable, then okay, then one state for all, and then we have South Africa as the example. And just say a few more words about the suicide bombings. One, the suicide bombings, uh, and then I, of course I mean suicide bombings aimed at civilians in Israel, are despicable. Yes. Absolutely despicable. Absolutely, yes. And by the way, extremely stupid, since they have done an enormous, immeasurable damage to the cause of the Palestinians in the world, we all know. Yeah. But, I think it is, it's fair and important, yes necessary, to add a few notes here. And that is one, when did the suicide bombing start? They did not start before the beginning of the 90s. Please realize, be aware of the fact that the Palestinians, in all their misery, did not commit suicide bombings for 25 years of occupation. That's remarkable. That's remarkable. And the other note I wanted to make is this, that yes, the despicable suicide bombings, but all statistics we have about Palestinian civilians being killed and maimed up to today show that the number of Palestinian victims, civilian victims, of um, violence committed by the Israelis is at least three to four fold of all the casualties by suicide bombings. Then we should add that also. Uh, concerning Theo de Graaf, when he was still alive, yeah. he uh, had an initiative, an idea, to organize a uh, conference where historians, psychologists, scientists, leaders from various religions, sci uh, and many people, uh, also artists, would come together to research, to examine how the situation in the Middle East could be changed and how we could get away from all our ideas from the past and go into an innovative direction and come to new conclusions so that we, we may be go on a path which will lead to peace. W would you both give maybe your reaction on this uh, proposal? We always or talk and hear about peace. But who's really interested in peace? And who's the, who has the key to make that peace between those brothers? We are all, I find out we are like old slave. And always we have a boss or leader or father or grandfather. And always we have to listen to him and he, he, our head told him yes. Mm -hmm. The people, and especially in they don't face the truth to say to you, what are you doing wrong? Let us change. Let us to find another way. But we don't find those guys to talk. With all those meetings, I can't see some people face. There is something wrong in me. But you told me, yes, thank you. You, you can change me. Because you know, maybe you know more than me, but you can change me to say to me, what you doing is wrong. Let us find another key mm -hmm. to change. Mm -hmm. But if you always feel because I am highest, I'm older, I know more, you always agree about what all the wrong, and you don't know I'm doing wrong. And you don't face me to tell me, Ibrahim, what you're doing is wrong. Let us find another way. Let, let, let us to make a golden key to change this way. But that's that the suffering of the world. In that land I can see 
and I walk every day in the front from my home is 200 meter. I have to walk about four schools, kindergarten, boys school, girls schools, and the the college. And I look, believe me, in this this the school opened just two weeks ago. I look what the suffering in five years. We don't want to look for 50 years. No houses, no money, no nothing. And I can see, feel, none of the people, as the Jews, the Jews still suffering, and they, everyone suffering in this land, what's the future about our children? None of us can give the children what they need to eat, because we have to pay school, we have to pay electricity, water, and we have trillions of dollars we spent it on war and killing, because we don't want to stop that material, the poison, the sky and our heart. Mm -hmm. We want some people to face it it's enough. Don't ship that material for us. Let us defeat our children. Let them stand strongly on their foot. And that's what we need today. Really, I feel we pray hard to find a new generation. So let's say, as, as we need young, who have a love, have a heart for loving the Mother Earth and the people on the Earth. It doesn't matter if you are Christian, Muslim, Jew, Buddha. We need our children to grow in love, to break the wall, and bring love to the nation, to those young. In the longer run, will, uh, will a happy future come into being for, for that land, for that battered land of Palestine, holy land? Um, I think, um, notably, the Israelis should realize that they are in the Middle East. That, that is not in their mind. Why do the Is Israelis uh, want to, uh, to be a part of the, of the European soccer competition? They are not in Europe. Why do the Israelis uh, participate in the uh, annual uh, Euro Song Festival? Euro Song Festival. They are not in Europe, and that, but that is that, that playing soccer or singing uh, silly songs is not so important by itself. But what is important is that, that it reflects a mindset. We are not of the Middle East. We are in. We are psychologically Europeans. We are. We are part of the West. Other culture, a better culture, a superior culture. That is. That is what it reflects. And that so that mindset should 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 change some way or another. Better sooner than later. And then only then would it become conceivable for the, the wonderful idea of a kind of a European uh, uh, Union-like association of states um, in the region. Only then is it conceivable for Israel uh, and the new Palestine, or if there is one nation for that new nation, uh, to associate itself with Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, the neighbors, and maybe others, to make an association to the benefit of all. But it is to to totally impossible in the given situation where the mindset there is uh, directed at, focused on Europe and the West. What series of realistic sacrifices can be asked from both sides to reach sufficient stability in which trust can grow. First, in that land, we talking a lot about that, but the Mother Earth always always crying. First, a lot of our own land. It's all the land belong to God, because we are all guests on this earth. And look what the poison of this Mother Earth today, with thousands of uh, acre of land with filling with land mine. And we're talking about that. We have a lot of chemical and material. We have a lot of sickness never happened in the history of Israel, Palestine. People have leukemia all over. 
and that's the suffering and people don't want to talk about it kids born with leukemia people young you know I am from a family many in my family when they die before when they became a grandfather all the women have to dress them dress up, up in out and all that and and suffering because we study in a village in a community my grandfather died when he's young 140 140 years old written about his life at the National Geographic on April 1959 I have a copy I will give you every one of you and my grandmother lived till 120 and they still have a cousin he's 114 walking now from Matovlis at least twice a week to the Dome of the Rock to pray and fast today we missing people we hear in the mosque someone die but most of the people young die with leukemia or there we drink mineral water we drink everything pure and all that I remember as a child from a farm we go to the mountain and all the animals drink for that hole and we came clean it to say and drink and people live in a hundred years mm -hmm. one French doctor been healing all the village all the village and today all the hospital all the study they cannot find medicine medical for to heal this 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 problem and small land small country we have a lot especially in the south in the area of the Monarad Beersheba we have a lot in the animals and in the people we need the heart we need people have a heart as Mother Teresa to love and to give to the land to the people Ibrahim you travel all over the world you told me about your trips and you met many people I think you even have been ever understood you well at the White House uh, maybe you can tell something about your meetings and the people who support your efforts concerning peace in the Middle East uh, first through the way I will how will I live I grow and uh, an open home I have uh, that uh, small house with many bedroom and people never have a key in my door I know how people find me but people just come in and out but I want to tell you about uh, Washington DC I have a small family there over 700 to 1000 memory of my family live in DC why one of my cousin who born in the same home where I live right now in 1879 in 1894 a boy no shoes no language no ID nothing run away from home no mobile no phone but mom with the heart of the mother been looking for her baby 14 years mom looking for her baby don't show up the boy walked from Mount Everest to a city on the north called Haifa in 1894 he saw the ship inside the water jumped in it hide himself between the boxes they took him through Swiss Canal to England all Asia in two years time he worked in the kitchen big few words from different language arrived in the state of Washington DC as we have over 700 memory of my family living in DC now we have restaurant we have stores we have shops we have everything we have 1000 in Yemen we have 1000 in Jordan through the war and the, all that the people running for looking a job and we have few hundred we are choosing to live that but the leaders have to study us have to study both of us to organize they came to that land and there's people living it and you see when one one million mm -hmm. Russian come to the land they have citizenship of that land and I'm not I have nothing there I uh, read here on uh, your uh, business card uh, Ibrahim may peace prevail on the earth yes uh, now the question is how can the destabilizing elements with their own non-peace agenda, agenda be kept at bay long enough to give the workings of peace the time needed to grow roots so you understand the question right all those elements who do all kind of things which have nothing to do with peace and uh, destroy uh, the peace process how can they be uh, put at bay uh, uh, 
what do you what's your reaction to this question maybe you both have an answer why do we my friend Ibrahim I understood and fully understood and myself too where do we find the inspiration and the drive the motivation to do what we are trying to do in this uh, in this matter of misery and injustice now the there are several things but first of course i should say inspired by you but it is really so that is uh, it is a, for, for me predominantly but not only a matter of of faith i cannot believe that the good lord has ever wanted uh, a people to come in to vandalize a country and to kick out the local population as much as there may be theological discussions about the real meaning of the promised land and all that from the old testament it is all fine with me but it cannot be so that the good lord wants that final uh, that that final aim to be realized in such a way of cruelty um, as um, as it, uh, it has been been done over over several uh, several decades already that cannot that cannot be that cannot be be uh, harmonized with and uh, even a uh, whatever bit of of, of 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 Christian thinking and this, the second point is I think it is extremely important for us at least I, I that is always on my mind to work um, uh, here in, in in the West in in such a way as to make our friends in Israel not only the Palestinians all the friends in Israel who are constantly fighting the fight uh, in uh, organizations for human rights and for peace um, to feel that they have support in the West that we are with them and uh, that we do not accept things as they are going and that we have the highest respect and admiration for what they are doing but that is the way and uh, maybe may uh, next next to my uh, my faith faith in in honesty is the drive as long as these peace and and human rights organizations and also individuals and there are quite a number of them eh? you know them better i know also quite a few of them are working laboring suffering uh, with so much courage and perseverance as they constantly show that it is our our um, duty yes our, our real our, our duty to to be with them and to, uh, to 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 show we are inspired by, by their courageous example Thank you. only what i want to say I sent all the Jews, they really know about us because we met and visit one another. I want the, our leader to know us and to make that separation, but will never know us because we never can meet and visit one another because the secure and security. I cannot come to, you, to that leader or officer to talk to him. Because I am, first I am Palestinian, I'm danger. I cannot talk to everyone. But I'm happy when I saw many rabbi come into my home and talk to the world. Yes. I've been there just two weeks ago with the grandson of uh, the third of Martin Luther King. When he came to Jerusalem, I walked with him at the Holy Sabbath Church, at the Wall in Wall, and the Aqsa Mosque. I've been with him just 
two, two, two and a half week ago. Wonderful. Yeah, okay. that's that's how we Wonderful. can study. And what he walked, <coughs> sorry, he walked in the city. He been in Bethlehem, Hebron, everywhere. No security. No secure. He walk like and hold me between his arm and go and walk everywhere. You know, but that's that the door. If we meet and we reach and go, because we are chosen, we have the same air and same water and same sky there. We have to meet and to talk to another and eat, be so bread and salt together, to have really as to be strong brothers.